All right, we are live. I'm nervous. Finally. You're not nervous. <laughs> What's up, everyone? Welcome to a live episode of Crypto Tips. We haven't done this for about six months. Yeah. So thank you for bearing <clears throat> with us and giving us your questions. Patreon members, CT Club members, thank you so much. Yeah, and thank you everyone for tuning in right now. It's great to be here. Yes. Dave D, I see you in the comments. And Jason Jenkins. Leroy, Leroy Jenkins. Jenkins. <laughs> yep. What's up? The Papa pals Vince? are back. It's so cool. Okay. Yeah. I miss this so much. Yeah, for sure. What's up? Really? I, I'm going to butcher that one. I'm going to break my microphone. Okay. JP Wright, what's up? W, thank you so much. Yes. Let's answer this really quick. Okay. Do you think it's smart to rotate my BTC into ETH and Luna once we start getting to the $80,000 range? Um, this is because in 2020, alts topped later. Yeah, you know, maybe around like, um, for, for me, I'm not going to touch touch uh, Bitcoin. Uh, for, for Heidi and I, we're not going to touch Bitcoin. But um, for many people, you know, if, if you have an overly large position in Bitcoin, if you think you do, then maybe wait till the 55% dominance range. Um, that might be a okay time to start switching profits into other coins. So, hmm. yeah. And Luna is going to do fantastic, in my opinion. It could. Yeah, for sure. It will. Nick. <laughs> hi, Nick. Great yes. to see you in the comments. You guys, you're amazing. We met up with Nick actually today, had lunch. So oh, it's what's cool up, to Nick? see a, a yeah. fellow Patreon member in person. Yeah. Um, also, my balls have lumps, so say my name. And I'm only saying it because I know you're also in our Discord. And some people have been calling you a scammer just because of your name. So I just want to say hi. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so low audio. Let's see if we can fix that a little bit. Hello, hello. Let us know how our audio is. Okay, we always have to be. Volume is so it. low. Okay. Okay. Can move in there. Okay. Yeah, all right. So here we go. Um, so yeah, so, uh, besides NFTs, we're definitely going to get into that really shortly, but first I'm going to talk about how what's happening with the Bitcoin futures ETF. Uh, that was a pretty popular upload I did a few days ago talking about what the futures ETF means compared to the spot Bitcoin ETF and the one for pro shares, uh, pro shares, Bitcoin futures ETF is now live and it generated like $500 million of volume in its first hour of trading. So it's probably why Bitcoin's been doing better. Uh, it's doing all right, you know, like it really hated the $62,000 range. But, you know, as we've said before many times, you know, especially during the 30000 range when people are panicking, <clears throat> I saw like a lot of prominent people on Twitter and YouTube literally panicking, like big time trader guys. And... I'm like, what are you doing panicking? Like, this is the time to buy. Mm. We did not see a parabolic blow off top. And I was very confident in that, that we're going to see all time highs before, you know, three years or two year bear market that mm. you, people thought we were going to go into. So, yeah, that's um, that's pretty much. Yeah. That. Also, and in response to this, you know, seemingly friendly or. Uh, approach or whatever for the SEC and approving the Bitcoin futures ETF Grayscale has submitted their Bitcoin trust to apply to be an ETF to be more legitimate to be the real deal not an ETF like investment product. Um, they've been trying to get this approved since 2017. But they think that because the SEC has approved a Bitcoin futures ETF, then why won't they approve a Bitcoin spot ETF? And I think a lot of the comments hit the nail on the head on that last video I posted talking about, you know, they got to get their hands in it first. <clears throat> they got to be able to manipulate it as best they can to benefit their friends first. So we'll see how long it takes for a Bitcoin spot ETF to get passed. Maybe Grayscale will be the first one. If they are, they're going to definitely benefit from having the first mover advantage. If they're not, uh, they're going to suffer from losing some market share from whoever does get uh, approved. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure. Because then if a, if a Bitcoin spot ETF is approved, Grayscale is going to suffer if it's not them because they're trying to be like that. So, yeah, interesting. Um, is sure. the volume OK now? Everyone let us know. I think it's probably OK. OK. All right, good. Oh, and more questions? OK. Um, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and, and leave them in the comments. We'll try to get back to them. But uh, let's get to talking about NFTs, right? 
how to choose them, how to buy them. A lot of people have been in our Patreon, especially have been asking, you know, what portfolios are, what NFTs are in our portfolios? Which ones are we looking in? What? Oh, here, here's one. <clears throat> yeah. Are you invested uh, investing in any cool NFT projects at the moment? Mm-hmm. Actually, yes. Uh, <laughs> today, we just announced on our uh, CT club that we have been buying um, Theta Punks, which is pretty cool. You know, it's the first third party um, uh, project built on our NFT project built on uh, Theta. So, you know, crypto punks are popular. It's trendy. You know, I think it's going to do pretty well. <clears throat> and I looked at the discord and look, they're very active and stuff. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, if you're going to look at a, a project, um, I would definitely look at the discord, see how, you know, active they are and see if people are excited and stuff. And, you know, you can go from there. Also, you can also see uh, different developers creating different projects. So, um, y- you know, you can see like, for instance, CryptoPunks, the people that develop CryptoPunks, if they're going to open up another NFT, that would mm. be good as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's plenty of opportunity right now in the NFT space. <clears throat> I think like maybe it's, it's maybe this is a big bubble, maybe. but I do see... <laughs> But I do Probably. see that, you know, during the long run, I, I see this um, kind of developing into much more than just, you know, uh, JPEGs. I, I see yeah. this being Absolutely. much bigger than that. But okay. this is really cool. This I is think, where we are now. But but I think, you know, people who are investing in NFTs right now, like whether it's Theta Punks or, or some other one, you know, I, I think that if they hold them over a long time, a longer period of time, occasional one will actually do really well. So for instance, you know, uh, crypto punks back in 2017, those are airdropped to a lot of people. And some people kept those till, you know, mm-hmm. through the down trend and then all the way to here now. And, you know, some had like two to three or four. Can you imagine having that, you know, having at least $500,000 per coin or per NFT? I think that's, I forgot what the floor price is, but it's ridiculous. So, Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. So, sorry. Um, the Theta Punks. That's yeah, the Theta first Punks. Third party on Theta. Please do your research before you decide to invest in this. Um, it's just something, uh, an opportunity that we wanted to make public because it's the first. And we are not getting paid for this. Yeah. I bought it with my own um, funds. So yeah, we usually, they offered compensation. I'm like, no, it's all right. Um, So I I think it's really good because we don't have much of a bias towards it. So um, that's pretty much what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, So anyway, other things that you can look for for deciding, you know, on buying an NFT, for example, to do your own research on these Theta Punks before you, if you decide to do so, yeah. please check out their Discord. Did you say that? Yeah, check okay. out the Discord. Um, we'll leave the link below. Yeah. So they're really good. Yeah, but so, okay, talking about the creators, uh, the platform that they're launching on, um, the community that's backing it, how active is it, and also this concept of getting into the minting process versus, versus buying pre-existing NFTs. Uh, obviously buying the, going through the minting process is highly more risky than buying something that's already existing. We saw that already. There was a rug pull situation where like a 17 year old guy was <laughs> promising these really unique, uh, designed NFTs artworks. And then it ended up, people just got some emojis. So, but <clears throat> I have to say that I, I kind of, hmm. I kind of disagree with that. <clears throat> Sorry guys. <clears throat> Drink some water. <laughs> okay, okay, got it. So I, I, I think that, you know, if you're getting onto a mint and if you're lucky enough to get onto a mint, especially when there's hundreds of thousands of people like trying to get into the mint, um, you know, you're getting at bottom prices. So for instance, like... If, if they end <clears> up <throat> existing. Yes. If they actually get If into they it, exist, which, you know, if you're... Sorry. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> if they exist and you actually score yeah. one of the these things... When, you know, you're, you you get it after hundreds of thousands of people are trying to buy it at the same time and you, you're one of those lucky ones, then usually you're pretty good. You know what I mean? Sometimes these projects will open up crazy amounts higher, like 10 to 20x higher right away. And what if it's a scam then? Then you just wasted 20 times that, 10 to yeah. 20 times that, that amount of money, uh, whereas you could have just, you know, simply got it into into a a minting process. But 
what I found is that things pump really hard and then a lot of times they kind of dwindle down yeah. and then they go again. So for instance, like I couldn't get into cryptodes. One of them was cryptodes. Uh, I think it's the guy name is Grempliner or something like that. <laughs> and, um, you know, I bought it for under an ETH and it ended up being like it went like crazy high, then back down to, you know, whatever. And then now it's now it's a, like six or seven ETH and it went to like 14 ETH before. Mm. So, you know, these things are all over the place. It depends on how popular, you know, the project is and also like what the coins are doing and what the market sentiment is, is doing as well. Um, but it's kind of interesting because the last big pump in NFTs, the whole space was kind of struggling a little yeah, bit, which was true. really interesting. So it could be an additional hedge for, uh, you know, your investments in crypto. If you're looking for another way to diversify your portfolio, NFTs could definitely be a good one. And also, you know, the reason why another reason why this Theta punks could be a good idea is because it's being launched on Theta, not on Ethereum. Um, so the fees will be much cheaper, way cheaper. And it's the first one. So it's got the inaugural, you know, kind of a fresh and so fresh and so clean NFTs on Theta. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so to also talking about, um, these different platforms that you like the marketplaces that you can find pre-existing NFTs for those of you who don't know anything and you're just wanting to know where to start, uh, open C, rareable, uh, soul C and for Solana and engine. Yeah. OpenSea and Rarible are for Ethereum-based NFTs. Yeah, SoulSea is for Ethereum, and Engine is also for Ethereum-based. And it's also got a gaming platform as well. Um, and uh, if you want to launch any wallets to help you buy these NFTs and, and store them, take a look at MetaMask, Trust Wallet, Engine, and also Phantom. Phantom is for Solana as well. Um, we've been much more active in the Solana NFT ecosystem, or maybe equally uh, between yeah. Solana and Ethereum. But now Theta is coming out. So, yeah. and, by, and by the way, we will leave the link below for Theta Punk. So, yeah, in case you want to check it out. Also, I'm really excited to see what, what the heck Cardano is going to do. Yeah, that's going to be amazing. <laughs> so, um, I'm really, really excited on that. So, we'll see. Like. You know, time is going to tell. Yeah. But, uh, um, just getting back to some of these questions, someone was asking what I'm drinking. It is a delicious uh, echinacea and elderberry tea. Delicious. Got to get that immunity going. What? Let's see. Let's see the, these oh, questions. Yeah, I'm going through. Um, what do you think about Solana? Solana. Well, we've been pretty bullish since the couple of dollars. So yeah. I think, you know, right now it's, just being accumulated right now, as, as you can tell, the the price is pretty much flatlined, mm -hmm. and so I think that's great. You know, people are wanting more Solana. Big money's wanting Solana, and that's how they can keep the price so steady. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think it's going to do really well during this next alt boom, for uh, sure. Edward is asking, "What is that background?" This is a beautiful image I found online. Uh, it's a fractal. And there's going to be much more fractals on our backgrounds as well. Um, let's see. It's not an NFT. <laughs> um, we are currently back in Portugal, back in our... Luna is Terra, yes. Our Terra happy Luna. place of Portugal, yeah. Someone's asking, Luna is Terra, yes. Uh, Luna is the coin, Terra is the ecosystem. And I did a video, a uh, deep dive on Luna. I highly recommend you check that out. Just do a quick search on my channel for that one. Um What's stable coins for lending? Um, DDD asks. Uh, depends what platform you you want to. I think put them to use on BlockFi right now is kind of what we're on right now. So yeah, for instance, USDC, uh, that's Coinbase's um, stable coin. You can also do do GUSD, which is Gemini. Um, different ones like Dai. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I mean, right now you can get eight point five percent on. Uh, on average, on a stable coin on BlockFi, but I think you know Celsius. Gosh, I can trip yeah. over myself. But yeah, Celsius could be really good as well. Um, and uh, what was that? Uh, Ave. 
Yeah. Ave is really well, good. Like, yeah, Ave is good too. <clears throat> yeah, there's plenty of to do on there. Yeah. He's asking, how do we do the lending? You don't do the lending. The platform does the lending. Actually, you're giving your coins to them. That's something you should be taking into consideration when you're deciding how much you're going to actually be lending out because you are giving away your, your ownership. Hmm. It's not actually a smart contract. So uh, if it's a centralized platform, Ave is not the case. It is a truly decentralized DeFi platform. Um, this one, uh, yeah. how not to buy NFTs if you really don't want them. I mean, you don't have to buy NFTs. Yeah. That, like, uh, uh, what you can do is you can buy the ecosystem, which is you know, yeah. like the coin behind it. Yeah. Right. So Theta, yeah. Theta Fuel. You Solana, you buy Cardano, you know, for Ethereum. instance, uh, Theta Punks uses. Uh, you theta can buy fuel, them with T-fuel. Theta Fuel, T Fuel. Yeah. Uh, and and you can actually stake Theta and get. T fuel yeah. every day. And also you don't have to invest in NFTs at all. No. Um, you don't have to feel like you're missing out. There's plenty of profits to be made without NFTs and just going the conservative route, sticking towards the, the you know, solid cryptocurrencies. There's still plenty room to grow for for all cryptocurrencies. So Mark, yeah. thank you for the five you, Mark. dollars. Okay, what is your final ETH prediction by the end of next <laughs> year? As proof of stake uh eth 2.0 um let's see well i mean i would expect it to be close to 10k you know like considering that um you know what the last bull run that i saw in eth the first one that eth was in um that was back in 2016 17 18 uh you know it went from 70 cents to 1365 i think like that something like that and so that's a lot of x's <laughs> so i don't but now you know the market cap is that much higher so it's harder for it to do a thousand x move you know what i mean so a lot of people are like oh it's going to go to 50k or whatever mm. whereas like what would that realistically put the market cap that would put an absurd you know you know pricing that'd be crazy so you know for me i'm i'm more conservative i i would i would be happy with you know ten thousand fifteen thousand bucks um i would definitely be happy with that so we'll see what happens nobody is going to be able to perfectly tell you what the price is going to be and as far as far as chain link is concerned you know chain link is huge it's yeah you know it's an oracle so it's partnered with a lot of different yeah, platforms it's going to do very well i mean it could do another 10x during this bull depends on how far we go and you know if willy Wu is actually right <laughs> with a never-ending bull run you know the <clears throat> the sky's the limit but also, you know, it's wise to be taking profits during this, these parabolic rises, which we yes. might have. If you're not taking profits, we will be taking profits and we'll be letting our CT Club members know exactly when we're taking profits. Um, it's going to be fun. So, yeah. Joan, <clears throat> thanks. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, Tom here had a good question. Does Solana's NF- NFT value depend on the Solana's popularity? <clears throat> what happens to those NFTs if Solana price falls out of the top 10? I think that's a really good point mm. to keep in mind is that these NFTs are valued based on the coin of the platform they're listed on. They're based in terms of Solana or they're, they're uh, priced in terms of Ethereum. So that means if you buy a, an NFT and then also the coin that you use to purchase that NFT is skyrocketing and your NFT is for sale, um, you're going to get a lot more for that if you do shift back into the fiat system or a stable coin, for example. And vice versa, if you're holding an NFT during the bear market, not only will maybe the popularity or the hype of your NFT not survive the bear run, but the coin that is used to purchase that NFT is going to uh, take a hit. And It'll take a hit hard, too. It's so not going to be a, there's, a for nice me, For me back. personally, I'm obviously very conservative. I think that comes across a lot in these videos. Uh, maybe I'm not as conservative. Toby, because it's a good balance, right? Everybody sure. got to have, you know, balance. But um, <clears throat> so you got to keep that in mind is like if you are into NFTs, I would suggest that, you know, unless there's one or maybe a couple that you want to just see what it does over the years, maybe you've invested money that you can afford to lose, which is what everyone should be doing. Never go all in onto an NFT. That's just crazy. Uh, but take profit, sell it, uh, and, you know, come away with some profit and some, some success. Triple D, Scott, mm-hmm. um, you can answer this one. Okay. On which platform can we lend 
on right now. Which platform? platform uh can we stake and farm on right now with good interest okay you can lend on blockfi celsius nexo ave uh the ave again is a decentralized finance lending platform uh highly recommend that one um you can do that right now also which platforms can we stake and farm on right now well Here's the thing is like platforms you can stake for me. That means like you're talking about Binance and their staking options when they call it staking, but really you're lending them. Um, and I, it's a pet peeve of mine, but, uh, for farming, you can farm on radium with Solana, for example, there's lots of farming platforms. Um, just do a quick, uh, web search and, you know, for farming platforms with crypto or w with Ethereum or Solana or, on AVAX or whatever platform you're interested in, whatever coin you're holding, there's lots of options. Um, and you can see the interests that are available right there on their websites. Um, Do you think it's a good see. idea? <clears throat> what, where did y'all go? Okay, so uh, let's see. Do you guys think it's a good idea to buy Theta Punks after the mint? Possibly, you Probably. know, I mean, if, if, um, if it opens and it's not crazy high, then yeah. You know, like I would, if I didn't have any after the mint, then I might consider buying one or two. Yeah. That's just me. So you never know what these things are going to do. For instance, I bought a, several of these coin, these NFTs after the mint and I've done very well in these. So, um, just because I can't, sometimes I can't get into a mint. It's just impossible. At least where, you know, Theta Punks will, are, are good on, um, they, they've had there's been plenty of time uh, to have to to get into these mints so um, i'm looking real quick someone is asking <clears throat> where can us citizens buy t fuel and if you just go to coingecko.com and you search in t fuel it shows you all of the exchanges that list it um, i see binance maybe it's binance.com gate.io crypto.com uh, bitthumb there's a few so yeah um, that's a if you're ever looking for how to buy a coin, go to coingecko.com, search the coin and click on the markets tab and they'll show you there. Sure. Um, let's see. As far as if you want, somebody asked, uh, how do I make my own N NFTs? Like yeah. what you can do is you can just go to Fiverr pretty much and hire somebody to make it if you don't know. No, to... they're saying he's an, he's an oil part. He's an oil, oil painter. And he would like to make an NFT oh, of it. one of my paintings. Any tips where ah, to go to learn more? Maybe Fiverr then. <laughs> it's Fiverr's answer for Seriously, everything. like, I mean, I have no idea. Like, I, I, we I haven't got, go. gotten into actually creating our own NFTs yet. Um, a lot of people are doing it, so it is accessible. We haven't, I can't tell you from experience yet. Um, I'm always talking about these new series I'm going to do on NFTs. I haven't done them yet. I've done a lot of traveling, getting back home, and getting the house in order has been fun. And now I'm ready to dig in and get all these series done. So keep an eye out for more videos on NFTs. But, so so where I see this space headed is what like the NFT space. It's, it's going to be much more than what you see now with like these 8-bit characters. What I, I think it's going to happen is um, I think as governments continue to really – kind of put a heavy hand on on their citizens around the world i think and that that's going to affect the economy and there, with the amount of money currency printing that's going to be happening um i see a lot of businesses just going out of business so a lot of people are going to have plenty of time to just sit around while getting paid universal basic income and they're going to escape in the metaverse um so that's pretty much augmented reality so people are going to be buying property online like on digital virtual property reality. virtual reality yeah. and i think that's where it's headed um you know it's it's sad and, and dystopic but you know that's i i don't see a way out of this where we're heading so mm -hmm. um just keep that in mind that you know th there are some scary times ahead but at least you know that you'll have <laughs> there there is hope where you know people can go to but as far as like, I, I think there's going to be a lot of money to be made in that aspect. And then you can use that to kind of go and, and get another citizenship if you want or, you know, escape to your own island. Um, <laughs> Not to be too dark. 
Yeah. Someone, uh, Archer Bullseye, thank you so much for bringing this up. He is a moderator on our Discord and he's a rock star. Yeah. Um, he's saying anyone who doesn't get their questions answered on the stream is welcome to bring them to the CT Discord and the community can try to answer them for you. Amazing. Um, in all of our video descriptions, you can find a link to our public channels on Discord. And it's a really cool place. We got a, a really... Uh, active channel there on a NFTs. Really good community, yeah. So if you guys want to continue this conversation on NFTs after this live stream, we can go there. And while I'm on the topic of our Discord, that's what we're going to be doing now after these live streams. We're going to bring the conversation for a little after party chat uh, on our Discord. So you guys can all check it out and say hi. This guy and, asks, is there a okay. way around using MetaMask while oh, buying yeah. NFTs? Yeah, of course. You can use, for instance, Phantom Wallet on Solana Yeah. Um, and go ahead and buy NFTs that way on the Solana network. Um, I'm sure there's different ways around. It, it really depends on the wallet's uh, inner... Uh, <laughs> uh what do you call it what when they which wallets they've partnered with with the platform that's listing the nfts what's that that's... called again <laughs> oh my goodness it's a, we're, done. <laughs> we're newbies <laughs> all right part. um yeah it, so like it depends which other wallet options are available on whatever platform that you're selecting to buy the nfts from uh like i said before trust wallet engine uh metamask and phantom are a few but it, again it depends on the platform yeah um let's see uh luna over cardano rest of the year um i would i would have both i think both of them you know are going to be incredibly strong so they have really like their network effect is huge on both of them and both have very good developers so uh that would be i wouldn't either or on mm -hmm. that one yeah no richard is asking if you didn't have any bitcoin would you buy at current price or wait for a pullback absolutely I'd buy it this current price i'd buy this i would eat i wouldn't welcome even to this channel i wouldn't we even watch bitcoin. the rest of this this <laughs> stupid live stream no, okay. and i would just go ahead and buy like i i would go dollar cost averaging so you put you get your feet wet right mm -hmm. now and then every day or every week you go ahead and purchase a little bit you set aside a certain amount every week or every day if you can and buy bitcoin regardless of what the price is and until like we reach all-time highs and after we reach like all-time highs and past that you know I, I expect it to drop back a little a, like a, a quick you know let's go back down to the uh 50s 59 maybe or or maybe the low 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 60s and then Boom! Like we're gonna, we're gonna fly because there's really not a lot of resistance up there. I mean, there just isn't. And even at sixty four thousand, there wasn't a lot of, hmm. a lot of people buying at sixty four thousand as well. It was so quick that it was there. Just not a lot of people were buying. So yeah, I expect it to, to skyrocket. So that's why it's a good idea to maybe get your feet wet because you know once it hits a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand bucks, you know whether that's this time or next next, next bull. You're gonna want to. You're gonna be happy that you yeah. Bought it this price. Anybody that holds their Bitcoin for four years, um, if you have a four year time frame, like you're gonna make money in this space usually, like yeah. historically. I mean, because Bitcoin's not as fleeting as these other altcoins, which is why we're pretty comfortable with always talking about Bitcoin for the long term. Yeah. And yeah, definitely determine your time frame for your investment. Obviously, uh, Christy. She's asking, is Exodus wallet safe or good for small amounts of crypto? I'm new to crypto this year. I have so much to learn, but I watch you and a couple others every day learning as much as I can. Well, welcome to the rabbit hole that is cryptocurrencies. Yeah. And really glad that you found our channel and you're enjoying it. Um, for small amounts of crypto, Exodus wallet, sure. I would not use it as like a hardware wallet. It's not It's not like a permanent storage solution. It is really convenient with the inner... Uh, there's that word again that I can't think of. <laughs> with its Interoperability. <laughs> I think that's what it is, right, Heidi? No, I can't think of the word. It's not? Oh, boy. oh this is embarrassing. Welcome to our first live stream in six months, guys. Yeah. Um, it's... <laughs> Um, with the different platforms and, um, like it has, for example, you can swap coins on it. You can probably interact with DeFi with it. And so Exodus wallet is helpful, but it's not the most secure because it is a web-based wallet. Um, 
and be careful how you generate your seed phrase for it and make sure you're generating it when the Wi-Fi is turned off. Yeah. Anyways. Okay, can I get back to some more Sure, yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, let's see. You guys are killing it in the questions here. Wow. Okay. Uh, one second. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, yeah, are there any essential fundamentals or tokenomics that you guys look into when choosing NFTs? Like, what are your what are your go to criteria that you're looking at to check off the list that gives you the green light to go for? I want to see if first, and do you and yeah, okay. I'll, well, if it's a first like like uh, Theta Punks, the first third party NFT project on there, of yeah. course I'm gonna get it. Okay, but like, what uh, like other, what other ones? Like, what's the what is the commonality of you investing in NFTs? What are you looking for? Uh, like I said before, like a very active, um, engaging community on Discord. If you go on Discord, you can easily find that. And you know, if people are super excited, you know, they have a good, pretty good marketing team or whatever, um, then. It, yeah, I mean, why not give it a go? You're not going to know for a fact whether or not it's going to be a good project. For, for for instance, like I've gotten into several before I started sharing, you know, my NFTs with with the the world uh, that kind of flopped or whatever, just because I was still learning about it. Because you really like, and for for me to learn this stuff, to for me to learn where to where to go, I have to invest my money, and then I'm you know, either win or lose. And then I can learn from that. So mm -hmm. like, I just, from what I've known, like it's, it's a community. Yeah. It really is a community behind it. So also um, I, th I think gaming based NFTs have a lot more utility than others right now. Cause that's, what's going to keep building the community and bringing people to it. Right. Yeah. Much more than just, I think that's why we see a lot of uh, NFTs just kind of pump and then disappear or the hype fades and that's it. But mm. with gaming based NFTs, that could be. Uh, and gaming industry is, is gigantic. So like much you're going to see that. so much money being poured into gaming NFTs. You're going to be blown away. Like there's one called Ember Sword. I know that you can actually buy land right now. Some of the land, some of the cities cost about $80,000. Um, another one we are into <clears throat> is called, uh, Ave Gache, uh, G H S T. Yeah. And so that's done pretty well. You know, we, we shared with our CT club members, um, a long time ago before it pumped and then it went, yeah, it went crazy, but, um, <clears throat> you can, you can buy stuff for that game as well. And it's kind of cool. Yeah. It, I, I like it. It's, it's engaging. So mm. We had a question here from Brendan. Thank you for the super chat, Brendan. Um, hi guys, CT member here. I got into crypto because of SafeMoon, but since finding you guys, I've learned so much. Thoughts on SafeMoon, should I sell? Mm, we do have some thoughts on SafeMoon. Uh, Go for it, honey. I want, there's I'm better options forward. out there. That's easy. Uh, if you're If you're profitable with it, I mean, I would take those profits and count yourself lucky. Um, I don't know. I don't have do a lot really of faith. Well I don't doing... have a lot of faith in the longevity of this one just because of its tokenomics is very similar to other scams that have also existed in the past that did not continue to exist. So, if you if you think? make money during during this next, you know, pump up, pump. Yeah. I mean, if I were you, I would get out. <laughs> I'm just saying, if I were you, once yeah. it pumps. Yeah. Why not? Why not get out? Because, you know, it's probably not going to do very well during a bear run, bear market, as most coins don't do well during a bear market. Most of the top 10 of the last bull run don't exist in the top 10 now. And that I don't I think history is going to repeat itself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Megan McIntyre is asking, thanks for being here, Toby and Heidi. Curious if you're going to any of the crypto Lisbon events coming up. Uh, we're going to have to see what's on the docket, but I think there was one in for Solana in there, November. There right? is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I it's, consider it. It's a possibility. Uh, if it. we are going, we will for sure be letting you know either yeah, we'll go live here there. on YouTube or on Instagram <laughs> or on Twitter or yeah. on our Patreon, whatever. So also, um, for those of you who enjoyed our video that we posted with Maria, again, that was like six months ago, uh, the lawyer here in Portugal, and your interest in maybe figuring out some immigration issues, uh, we're probably going to be developing 
a meetup of our own of some sort. So just wanted to put that out there, uh, put some feelers out there for those of you who might be in the Portugal area and willing to come check it out. Uh, let us know. Will you stream with Richard Hart about Hex and Pulse Chain launch coming? I mean, I would love to stream stream with Richard Hart and talk about anything besides Hex and Pulse Chain just because I think he's a pretty interesting person to talk to. He's really intelligent. He's actually a really nice guy. But he's also very skilled at always directing the conversation <laughs> back to guy. Hex and Pulse Chain. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to definitely be doing a live stream with him. We can't not do that. We, we met him so, in Malta and he was yeah. like a really pleasant guy. So. Yeah. Yeah, I actually I interviewed him first before we hung out, and I was like, he's he's a freaking OG, yeah. and he's he knows what's up with Bitcoin, and he's got a lot of experience. But the interview, obviously, he had an agenda for talking about hex, and I understand that. Yeah. Um, but then hanging out with him afterwards was much better. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, Anderson, we're going to get a few more questions. And we're going to wrap it up. But he says, "Hey guys, how many coins do you think is enough for a portfolio?" How many coins can you manage? <laughs> Basically. Yeah. For most people, it's literally just two. Yeah. Uh, how much time do you have committed to managing your portfolio and staying on top of the price movements of your crypto? If you're in coins that you don't plan to hold long term. <laughs> it's a full-time job. If you're dollar cost averaging, it, it's pretty you know, uh, uh, low maintenance <laughs> if you're dollar cost averaging yeah. Bitcoin. But there's so much. There's so many different ways that you can actually make money on your money. Like... I always, I always love the saying, like, never let your money get lazy. Yeah. So you want to just put it on overdrive, just making it thrown into a sweatshop, you know, make it work like crazy. And that's really how, you know, you really can stretch the amount of money that you're going to, you're going to be making in the future. Mm. I think it's really important because guys, we're not going to have this opportunity forever. Like if you think crypto is going to co constantly go up these crazy X's all the time, every single bull run, you're kidding yourself. Like take advantage of these, these bull runs right here, do what you can, all you, the, all that you can do. And, you know, you're going to be thankful you did later, especially when, you know, people aren't making the amount of gains that they used to, because I mean, think about it. The market cap over right now is $2.6 trillion. Like, what do you, what do you think it's going to 10 X every year? I mean, it could, if they hyperinflate, but you know, as, as, as if central banks hyperinflate their currency, yeah, it definitely can. Um, so, but what if they don't, you know, like what if, what if they don't continue to hyperinflate, um, their currency? So th there's risk in that. So just, just take advantage of what you have right now. And we're going to try to kill it on the end of this bull. Mm. I think we're, we're going to do fine. So Anderson Cassio is asking a good question or an interesting one. Do you think we can see Cardano and Solana disappear? Yeah, <laughs> we could. Yeah. I mean, technically we could. I think it's going to be much more impossible for, you know, Bitcoin to disappear. But yeah, it, it could. But, I mean, but then again, of... there's always going to be a blockchain. There's always going to be nodes. No, exactly. I, I think disappear out of the spotlight Sure. Uh, stop existing altogether, like the blockchain stops, maybe. Uh, only if something really horrendous happens to the nodes that are running the blockchain yeah. or if they're somehow targeted by governments and taken down or something like that. Um, but there's plenty of projects that were super promising in 2017, 2018 that aren't in the spotlight anymore. They're like on the third, fourth page of CoinGecko now. You know, it's not on any most people's radar yeah. the kind of you know stale projects they're still working there's still some like people using it it's just not as hyped up or trendy so that could definitely happen to cardano and solana because you have no idea what's going to be popular and trending five years from now um and how can can they pivot to stay relevant can they pivot to be providing the tools that people want right now it's DeFi and nfts Five years ago, could you have guessed that this was going to exist in the blockchain and, and all these uh, ways for earning passive income? Probably not. So who knows what, what's in the future for all of crypto and for us as users of it. But it's pretty freaking bright if this is how fast and how much we've improved thus far. It's pretty cool. So Gabor says, yeah. why is Toby so hot? <laughs> I think it's AC. It's not AC is not on right now. I think that's probably why. It's a pretty yeah. hot day today. <laughs> um let's see <laughs> what else toby's favorite comment thank yeah you. thank you salon nfts i would go for um 
Let's see what the ones that I've gotten into were Soulstead, um, DGen Ape Academy. Um, I actually, we were able to, I teamed up with a friend to get one of those, the, to mint one at the beginning, got mm. lucky on one of the wallets. Um, let's see, A-U-R-O-Y or something like that, or Aurori or something like that. Man, it's a weird one. they got to better names. Guys. Yeah, Salamas. Oh man, if you could have ever seen my face when I was Can we to... launch one called Salamis? Salamis, yeah. That could be good. That and then there's, trademarked. there's a couple more. Um, I think there's some, um, there's gecko ones. I don't know, but I, the, just the ones that I've gotten into, um, I can share my, uh, I can share my gallery with you. Uh, I just have to find a way to, to share it with everybody. Um, I'll, tr- I'll try to look, look for it, but, um, yeah, so that's, that's it. I think we're wrapping it up guys for this live stream. Guys. Thank you everyone. We got a bunch of people here watching right now. When we end this, we're going to be in our discord. Uh, and actually I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a link to it right now in the comments. So you guys can join, uh, for those of you who want to keep the chat going, we're going to be in discord for probably another 30 minutes or so. Um, so, and so, uh, you know, as we end this, I want to encourage people to really like when you see things like NFTs, when they first come out, people like ridiculed it, you know, and, and yeah. it, no matter how ridiculous something sounds, um, be open minded to it because it, you can make a lot of money, especially if you're a first mover. Um, that's what I like to do is being a first mover in these things. Um, you, you know, it's really important, especially like. For instance, what I do, I mean, I, I'll give it away, whatever. I, what I do is for fun <laughs> is to buy URLs. I yeah. love buying URLs. So for instance, DeFi, DeFi so for school. dummies, like like learning crypto. We got learningcrypto.com, you know, and we're rebuilding that website. But, the, yeah. you know, when you see crypto is going to be to blow up, you know, we bought you learning crypto like five, six years ago or whatever like that. Wow. So Seems it, like a lifetime ago. It was ago. a long time ago. So, you, you know, you can see things happening. So, for instance, augmentedreality.com or something. Who, who knows? Or or Metaverse. You know, like Metaverse is it's it's almost all taken. They're like There's so much that it, that's been taken so far. And the reason why there, there are still some existing, some gems out there is because people still think it's a joke. Hmm. And wait till people realize it's not a joke and it's actually Serious. something to take advantage of. You know, yeah, it might be an 8-bit character. You might think, so what? Well, would would you say so what about your CryptoPunks back in 2017? Hmm. Mic drop. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> two mics. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's all. Yeah. That's what I want to encourage you with. Just don't write things off right away as a lot of people do, I've learned to really just be open-minded and just go, okay, I'm going to take advantage of this. This may look ridiculous. I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I guess we did miss some super chats. Let me get real quick here at the end before we, let's see, making sure I really didn't miss. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. Philip was asking, have you looked into Luxo made by Fabian? Thank you. Um, no. it sounds familiar, familiar. I feel like someone asked me to look into that before, but maybe I didn't, it slipped my mind. Um, Sergio, sorry. I can't get to see any. buddy. Yeah. Patrick. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that's all. That's what you said. Why is Debbie so hot? <laughs> uh, thanks. Gigi. Uh, I, why is Heidi hot? Yeah. Cause she's next to me. And it's, it's, I'm, I'm really warm. Right he's now. radiating. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah, so join us now in the Discord. We'll see you guys there for or type with you guys there. But and if you like this, um, yeah, please visit us next week. We will be yeah. So same these live streams are going to be on, on Monday. Mondays, Monday, Monday, Monday at this time yeah. at noon Eastern time every Monday, unless the waves are big. Yeah, we got a, we got other stuff to do on big wave days, but we'll be here pretty much every week. People so. might want to know like. So I love big waves. I live in a place where the biggest waves in the world are. And Heidi is actually our radio person that tells us where the waves are because the waves can be so big. We can't really see what's beyond in the horizon. I mean, the and Ho- in the Heidi is our eyes in the sky. So, yeah, we use a jet ski to get into these waves because they're so big. Yeah, I should probably get LASIK <clears throat> surgery or something. Probably. <laughs> okay. So, Anyways. Yeah. Okay, bye guys. Thank you, Evan, for tuning in, and we'll see you in Discord. Stay disobedient. Bye. Yeah.